Welcome to the Old Time Radio Netcast Network. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and let's get into this episode. This episode is going to be Escape. Original air date is February 28th, 1947. The title is Out of This World. It's an audition episode, and I hope you enjoy. You really want to know what happened, Inspector? Ask Toby. Yes, Toby, who's only a ventriloquist dummy, but who knows more than you think. If you want to hang me, let him be a witness. Out of this world. Columbia's parade of outstanding stories of those moments when reality turns to illusion. When fancy becomes fact, sharp, shocking fact. Tonight, a remarkable adventure from the successful English motion picture, Dead of Night. A story which for the next half hour will take you out of this world. God! God! Here now, Frank, here now. Enough of that noise. You're disturbing all the other prisoners. God, tell me where, Toby. What have they done with me, Toby? Ah, so it's Toby again, is it? Now stop all that fuss about the dummy. I won't give up all any more noise in that solitary confinement for you. But I must be, Toby. Oh, God, God, I'll pay you anything if you bring Toby to me. Ah, you ventriloquist, glitter queer one. All this fuss about a talking doll. He's not a talking doll. Don't you understand? He's... Toby. Where is he? What happened to him? How should I know? Probably safe enough. The inspector will take care of him. Well, you tell the inspector to send Toby back to me. Back to me, do you hear? Tell him I want Toby and I want him right now. Uh, sure, sure. Inspector Dodd will be happy to do anything you say. You're an impertinent fellow. Oh, oh yeah, me. you're a rough one, all right. You're just lucky you ain't in here for murder. Lucky that fella Leswell you shot is coming along, all right. Leswell, whatever happens to him makes no difference to me. I wish he was dead. He tried to steal Toby from me. No, ain't that a pretty thing to say? Ain't you a charge? I'm sorry I caused any trouble. All I want is one thing to see. Go to the inspector, go to somebody, go to anybody and tell them I've got to see Toby. I've got to see Toby. <laughs> Inspector, he's raising a devil of a row down in the tells. Keeps yelling he wants his dummy brought back to him. I see. Well, if letting Tompkins have the dummy will keep him quiet, perhaps we can arrange it. Oh, good heavens, sir. Is that him there? In the chair? Huh? Oh, yes, that's Toby. <laughs> True. Sits up in the chair real lifelike, don't he, Inspector? Amazing, ain't it? It's fantastic that a man could be attached to such a thing. Queer how Tompkins keeps saying, uh... If you want to know why he shot Laswell, ask the dummy. <laughs> He's an odd one, all right. Imagine asking anything from the likes of this. Such a blank, idiotic little face he's got. Yeah. So you're Toby, are you? So it's you that's responsible for all the trouble I'm having with your master today. Poor Mr. Thompson. If I wasn't a mild man, I'd change that smelly smirk on your face. I'll give you a real sad look, I would. With All my... right, now, hold on there. Do you think that stick of wood will answer you? Eh? Oh, you know very well only a ventriloquist can make a dummy talk. Well, sorry, sir. I guess I did look a bit foolish. Yes, yeah, so before we all do, we'd better get to the bottom of this. God, bring something up here. Time we had a little talk. <laughs> If I promise that Toby will soon be returned to you, will you cooperate with me? Toby? Is he here? Is he near me? Here? Yes. But you can't see him yet. But I must see him, Inspector. You will, but not before I have certain facts. Certain facts? About your quarrel with Nell Laswell. Now, if you tell me the whole story, I may be able to help you. Help me? Why? 
Why should the police help me? Because it's part of my job. Yes, but you've done your job. I've admitted I shot Laswell. I did it. What else matters? Your motive. He tried to steal Toby from me. Isn't that motive enough? Tompkins, I really can't understand you. Understand? Of course you can't understand. I wouldn't expect you to. You've never spent years, endless years, playing shoddy, cheap music halls. Starving out at the elbow because you couldn't find a partner who understood you. You never toiled day and night for weeks on end, creating somebody like Toby who could go to the big time with you. Oh, so we can tell you what it's been like all that. Unfortunately, Tompkins, Toby has shown no inclination to speak to me. As yet. <laughs> Toby would appreciate that. Thank you. Yes, indeed he would. What have you done with him? You must see him soon enough, I promise you. But first, I want to know what makes you think Mel Laswell tried to steal Toby. Oh, I was aware of Laswell's intentions right from the start, in fact. Even before I met him, I had a premonition of something that I believe might separate me from Toby. I couldn't stand that. I was much to him. He me. I see. When I met Laswell at the club that night, I realized almost at once that he might be the one who caused the trouble. I thought you'd see that was the other thought he is. Regular troublemaker. Yes, Tompkins, I've seen him. Now come to the point. <laughs> As I intimated before, Toby and I have been playing all the better music halls the last few years. Top the league, you know. And then we got our engagement at the Kit Kat, the Ten Night Club. That's about as high as Toby and I, or any actor at that, can go. We were standing backstage, waiting for the dark act to finish their turn. Well, they're standing at it's not particularly hard for us to follow. And then Bigelow, the master of ceremonies, came along. Dad, see you ready to go, Tomkin. You're on as soon as they finish the wall. We know our act, Mr. Bigelow. Well, just so you know yours as well. Not so bad. Well, I don't want him to forget to take the chair out tonight. I have the chair right here. Now, don't worry. It won't happen like it did last night. And do us the favor of getting off the floor when you've introduced us. You messed up the whole first part of our act standing behind us. Here now. Now, don't say that. After all, it was your opening night. And how was I to know your act? You did it deliberately. You were trying to cut in on our laughs. Now, well, look here. I don't have to take this kind of stuff. What? Toby, that was not at all professional. Mr. Bigelow, I apologize. And Toby doesn't seem to have the grace to do it. But well, I accept it. Eh? Well, oh, well now, what do you think of that? I was thinking you take me in top ten. Do you see if I don't get to thinking that dummy is a living thing? Bigelow is a terrible ass, isn't he, Tompkins? <laughs> why, Joe, it's remarkable. Tremendously real, you know, the illusion. Oh, right. Oh, by the way, you're one of the particularly good this evening. You have a rival out there. Mm-hmm. Who? Laswell. Mel Laswell, the American. The ventriloquist from the state. Laswell? Oh, don't tell me you haven't heard him on the wireless. Here, look. Have a look. Uh, uh, he's, he's at the front table over to the left. Oh, yes. Yeah. Is that soon? Mm, and who's the gorgeous young lady? His wife. He's awfully good. World's greatest ventriloquist, I've heard say. I like her. <laughs> don't you recognize Petters and Big Bigelow? He may be the best, and again, he may not be the best. And you're pretty jealous, aren't you, Pumpkin? I'm nothing of a sort. In fact, you feel more uncomfortable than ever tonight, working in front of a real artist. Now, see here, Toby. But if you do, I'll carry you along. You'll carry me. Now, have you know, I carry the stuff. Uh, please, please, both of you. Stay out of the stuff now. Now, see here, joke's a joke, but when you use the... <laughs> Why, George, you took me up the road again, Tompkins. I thought you and this wooden imp were rowing. <laughs> As though he were human. <laughs> Imagine me thinking he's actually human. Stop clattering, Rubber. Let's get out there and bring us on. Yes, yes, of course. And don't forget to check. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh, oh, here it is. Look, I'm going to introduce Glasgow before I bring you up. Must you? And now, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, visiting royalty, <laughs> before I present to you our next little feature, I'd like to call on a distinguished variety artist who is here tonight. You've all heard him on the American Wireless, and seen him in the American cinema. Mel Laswell! Mel Laswell to stand up and enjoy that well-known kick-tack. 
hospitality. I'm sure that beautiful woman he's with is a much happier burden on his knee than Miguel Toole, whom you've seen so many times. Stand up, Melvin Lambert! And now, now I want to bring on an act the like of which Mr. Lightswell has never seen. Our own British ventriloquist, Eric Thompson and his talking timber, Toby! <laughs> Good morning, good morning, good morning. Hey, Captain, go easy on that morning stuff. Oh, come, Toby. Well, oh, that man over there looks like a steward officer. Why, that shouldn't bother you, Toby. You've been a very good boy, haven't you? Why, yes, but I'm out of school. Out of school? Why? Appendicitis. Out of school because you have appendicitis? No, not because I have it, but because I couldn't spell it. <laughs> Now, Toby, my lad, you know, if you better what kind of of yours, after all, people die of appendicitis, you know, and then you'd be a skeleton. I bet you don't even know what a skeleton is. Get a good grip on your oh, nose, darling. Right. That guy's got the worst material in the British Isles. No, what a skeleton is. I can tell so you're enjoying this. People are watching you. Well, then, what is a skeleton? A skeleton is a lot of bones with all the people who scraped off. You know, Toby, Toby, I saw a very strange thing the other day. Okay. Are you listening to me? I said I saw a very strange thing the other day. All right, you saw a very strange thing the other day. I don't blame the dummy for being in bed. Oh, my love. Now, tell me, there's not a problem with you for a bright man like you. I said I saw a strange thing the other day. The crowd men standing under one umbrella, and not one of them got wet. Well, not one of them got wet. Now, I know the payoff of this guy, but I won't say. And Mr. Laswell, though, still, don't you, Mr. Laswell? So what goes on here now? Come, come now, Mr. Laswell, I know you do. Uh, you give the answer. Please, darling, this is embarrassing. Well, Please, Mr. Laswell... Well, if this guy keeps riding me, I will get into this his back. This dummy's dummy says that he saw 12 men under one of and not one of them got wet. So why not, Mr. Laswell? Because it wasn't raining. <laughs> Well, you know, it wasn't raining. But now, you see, Thompson, everybody knows your joke. I'm humiliated, actually humiliated to be up here with a third-rate ventriloquist like you. Well, if you don't like your material, why don't you try rewriting it? Rewrite it? Uh, did you ever hear anybody going into St. Paul's and offering to rewrite the Bible? <laughs> And just what do you propose to do about it? I'd go to work for Mr. Laswell in a minute if he'd have me. Uh, Melvin, may I work for you? <laughs> no, let's go. Wait, Claudia. May I, Mr. Laswell? Well, I pay Mickey O'Toole 75 cents a week. He'll wind up in my fireplace if you'll work for 50. <laughs> I like nothing. You're a beautiful woman beside you. The lens is well white. I don't care. I need to. Ladies and gentlemen, you think this is part of the act, but it isn't. I think that Mr. Laswell is the greatest friend Philip in the world. Ladies and gentlemen, please don't blame me for this. It's Laswell. He's speaking all this through Toby. He's trying to steal Toby away from me. Mel, is that true? Do you have something to do with it? Relax, honey. Get the rest of this routine. I'm being quite sincere, Mr. Laswell. I'll work for you and you won't have to say me a topic. Mel, are you speaking through Toby? Well, Mr. Laswell, will you take me on? Watch him try to get out of this one, Claudia. I'm thinking about it, Toby. Oh, no. Toby, either you behave yourself or I'll take you off the floor. That's right, that's right. Just when I'm about to get a good job, call the MC back, tell him you want to run away and hide. Uh, Come on now, uh, big love. Thompson, uh, please, your uh, help. All right, all right. Just what you say, Thompson. That's all, and thank you, Bobby. A little instruction to fly. Oh, brother, it's about time the MC took over. It's all about the show, friends. All about the show. Oh, me, big love. Give him a nice head and give him a bad book, baby. That's how I knew, Inspector, that Laswell had taken more than casual notice of Toby. How I could have forgiven him for his interference on the floor of the club. That, that might have been mere professional discourtesy. But there was something else in Laswell's attitude that made me fear the man. It was his personal interest in Toby. Now, he wanted to separate us. I became certain of this later when he came back to my dressing room pretending friendliness. <laughs> Anyone in there? 
Who is it? Well, right, well, Thompson. Mr. Lassen. Well, oh, how do you do? Uh, you mind if we come in for a moment? All right. Please do. Now, this is my wife, Mr. Thompson. Mrs. Lassen. Mr. Thompson. What is it on? Throw those dressing gowns on the floor. Thank you. Well, so this is your boy. Nice carving job. <laughs> I'm very handsome. <laughs> Don't you think so, Mrs. Laswell? <laughs> well, you certainly are, Toby. Tompkins, I've been curious to know who made him for you. Don't put your hands on him. Oh, well, I prefer sorry. that you let Toby alone. Well, certainly you needn't worry. I'm quite handy with dummies myself. You certainly surprised me with that little act out front. Your own part in it surprised me, Mr. Laswell. Oh, believe me, Tompkins, I never you didn't do anything. You'll see, Mr. Laswell, Tompkins' attitude requires some sympathy. He's quite aware he's not our equal. Keep quiet, Toby. Tompkins, how far does this gag go? That depends on you, Mr. Laswell, and on just why you came to my dressing room. Oh, on no professional courtesy. If you've come to make some sort of a bargain for Toby, I am not going to permit it. Now, wait, Mr. Tompkins. I will not permit yes, it. wait, Tompkins. I will not permit it. Whatever the last one has to say to me is my affair. You might even pretend you're a gentleman and make a great little exit. Toby, if you're trying to make me look ridiculous... I'm succeeding. Yes, I know. Now go on over behind the screen and get your makeup off. Very well, Toby. But I warn you... Say that. Uh, pay no attention to him, Mrs. Laswell. I don't. No, I don't understand. This fellow's amazing. Not at all. He's stupid, really. Uh, constantly interfering in my affairs... Uh, Mrs. Laswell, now that we're alone, may I tell you something? Something I'm sure you've heard before. What is it, Toby? That you're very beautiful. That I'm very fond of you, Mrs. Laswell. Oh, now, look here. And whatever Tompkins thinks, Mrs. Laswell, you're really a very nice woman. Well, I'll be... No, no, I don't like this. Tompkins. Yes? Come out here. Well... What is it? How far do you want to carry a joke? A joke? Either you apologize to Mrs. Lathrop right now. Apologize for what? For the last crack you just made through Toby. Did I? Listen, you... Really, Mr. Laswell, I don't know what you're talking about. No, darling, let's get out of here. You're not going to leave me, are you, Mr. Laswell? Please don't. You're an awfully funny fellow, Tompkins. Don't blame me for all this. Take me with you, Mr. Laswell. I just want to be near her. If you're afraid I'll make love to her, you needn't worry. I wouldn't. Tompkins, this is the most disgraceful demonstration I've ever heard. What can I do about him? Mel, please, come on. I love her. I'll do anything if you'll just let me go with you, Mr. Laswell. Anything. All right, Tompkins, you ask for it. Oh, no, Mel, no, don't get it. Don't get it. No. Oh, Mel. Why did you do it? The man's not natural. Here now, what, what, what's going on? I don't know what's eating that fellow. Ribs are rib, but he doesn't know where to stop. I guess he got the last laugh on me, making me lose my temper. Huh? Well, he doesn't seem to be doing much laughing. He, uh, he's all right? He's a bit done in. Can't say he didn't have it coming, though. Oh, darling, I'm sad he didn't break the dummy when he fell. <laughs> And you do care what happens to me. I love you, Mrs. Laswell. So you see, Inspector, I should have known then that I couldn't prevent Laswell from getting Toby. I knew they'd be plotting the two of them. I see. One question, Mr. Tompkins. Yes. Would you say that Mrs. Laswell is an exceptionally attractive woman? To some men, perhaps. And since we know that you think and speak through the dummy, isn't it just possible that you may yourself find Mrs. Laswell, uh, appealing? Oh, what is this rubbish you're talking? Are you interested in learning the truth of what happened, or are you... Are you trying to muddle me up? I'd like to hear the matter out, Mr. Thompson. As you well know, I was sacked by the Kit Kat on the spot. I hardly spoke to Toby all the way home. I wanted to impress upon him the misfortune he'd caused us. And at first, I hoped that Toby's attention to Mrs. Laswell had embarrassed them both so much that Laswell would no longer feel any interest in him. But in my heart, I knew the Laswells hadn't finished, but at that very moment, they must have been plotting. Plotting their next move to get Toby away from me. And I'll tell you what that next move was. In our hotel, I carefully turned the key in the lock. Toby and I were secured for the night. I put him in his own little bed and then made ready for bed myself. 
And I moved around the room. His eyes followed me, scornfully. Then I thought of the revolver in my bag. I took it up. With the revolver in my right hand and the key in my left, I lay down on the bed. I dozed off. I don't know for how long. Suddenly I was awake, my eyes staring. Tell me it was gone. What is it? Caswell, I want to talk to you. No, be careful. It's Tompkins. The door is locked. Well, it's Toby. Get out, Tompkins. Now, come to Toby. Where is he? You've stolen Toby from me, and I want him back. I don't know what you're talking about, but if you're referring to your dummy, I haven't seen him. Now, now, get out. Oh. Oh. Yeah. What's wrong, dear? Oh. On the floor. On the floor at the foot of my bed. Toby. Oh. Toby, there you are. I found you. Oh, my poor little Toby, you've been kidnapped. Look, Tompkins, I don't know how your dummy got here. Toby. Toby, speak to me. Wake up, Toby. Look, William. Look how he's shaking that awful thing. He's always trying to wake him. Oh, you're not deceiving me, Toby. You know very well I'm here. Go away and leave me alone. I'm through with you, Tompkins. Oh, oh. Take it easy, Claudia. We've had all we can take of this, Tompkins. Are you going to deny you stole Toby from me? I certainly am. Look here, man. You're mad. You're ill. Ill? Who am I? You took Toby from me and you say I'm ill? I didn't take Toby. You brought the dummy here. You must have brought it here. Or maybe while you were walking in your sleep, but you brought it here. I'm going to prove it. Stay away from the phone. Tell me, the gun. You can shoot if you like. But I'm going to prove to you that... Hello. Hello, give me the desk clerk, please. Tompkins, I won't go with you. I'm going to stay with her forever. If Mr. Laswell will let me. Clerk, this is Mr. Laswell in 722. I want to know if someone came to my room a few hours ago. Is some sort of trick? A man came, you say, and he was carrying a ventriloquist dummy. Mm-hmm. You let him come up. Did you hear that, Tompkins? Uh, I'm not deceived by this. Will you describe the man for me, please? Oh, no, you're a devil, Laswell. You stole Toby from me, now you're trying to drive me mad. Well, here, take the phone. No, no, I won't take it. You're tricking me again. Don't be careful. Well, you won't succeed this time. <laughs> No, I don't deny that I shot Laswell, Inspector, but I, I believe that provocation was ample. I dare say you would agree. After all, Laswell turned a friend against me. An old and a very valued friend. Remind me. Very much. Tompkins, in due time, I may ask you to sign a formal confession on the basis of the story you've just told me. No objection, sign it. Oh, by the way, Inspector, I wonder if now you might get and see Toby and Ken. Uh, I'd like to oblige you, but... It's only for a short while, sir. I just felt rather badly about not seeing you, especially after our trouble. And if you're given a little time together, perhaps Toby and I could straighten out our affairs. Well, if you like, I think I can manage with... Perhaps uh, have him brought down to yourself. Oh, thank you, sir. Yes. Yes, I'm looking forward to seeing Toby again. I am indeed. <laughs> And that's the story as Tompkins told it to me, Mr. Laswell. Then it's incredible. I, well, I had some idea what was going on in the fellow's mind, but, but that did No, I'm so sorry for it. Uh, just one question, Mr. Laswell. You'll pardon my asking. Yes? Did you have anything to do with what's happened to the Kit Kat? I mean, you didn't project your voice through Toby. Certainly not. And so I thought. This business has me baffled. I thought Tompkins might be more dangerous than he's already proved. Well, I'm afraid there is that possibility, Inspector. Huh? It may be that Tompkins has become so accustomed to thinking as two persons, the personalities have actually become divided. Is that possible? For one man to have two separate and distinct personalities? Yes, that's not rare. Well, I'll admit I've, I've never heard of anything exactly like this business. What will happen to him now? It's a battle that Tompkins will have to fight out within himself. As long as he's in that cell without the dummy, he may learn to think for himself as himself again. Good heavens, man. Look here, I permitted that dummy to be taken to the Tompkins in his cell. You what? Tompkins was so keen on having a dummy with him well, that do I... Do you think that will harm him? Well, I don't know, but... Uh, it's me, sir. It's me, All right, dog. here I am. Uh, it's that Tompkins, sir. Uh, Sharon knows something awful in this cell. What's happened? Oh, we put the big doll in with him, like you said, sir. And right off he began arguing with it. Sharon on a fight. Real love, like 
It's just like two people want to eat each other. Well, that's well, you were right. Come on, we'd better get to them before it's too late. <laughs> Well, all I can say is I knew you'd wind up this way sometime. Put away for keeps a jailbird. Oh, Toby, I can't stand to having you talk to me that way. How can you be so ungrateful? I made you everything you are. Ha! You made me, did you? You were the smallest of the small till I teamed with you. Have you forgotten that once you were an empty, lifeless stick of wood? Oh, come off it, Tompkins. You're a regular slush pot of sentimentality. <laughs> Please, be a little kind to me. Get away from me. My God, stand the beggar. Why should I have anything to do with you? You've never done anything right. You couldn't even kill us. Oh, shut up, Toby. Shut up. Don't torture me. I wish you had killed him. Then his wife would belong to me. I could be with her forever. Oh, oh, you fool. Don't you know that's impossible? You're just saying that you're jealous because I love her. Oh, no, I can't stand it. Get a, get a monster. I've got to get rid of you. I've got to kill you. Destroy you. Tompkins, take your hands off me. I'm through with you. Take your hands off. No. No. Kill you, you vulgar little swine. Get the people. Get the swine. You beat. Get it. Get it. Get you die. No. Now, talk back to me, you little monster. Now, tell me I failed in everything. I smashed your face. You can't have killed me, Tompkins. No matter how you try, you can't kill me. Come down, him in time. He seems to have fainted. I guess we'd better see what we can do for the poor devil. He <laughs> made a pile of kindling out of his dummy, didn't he? Oh, Mel, what will it do to him when he sees what he's done to Toby? How is the inspector? He's coming around all right. Come, come kids, come out of it. Tell him everything's going to be all right. He's reviving. He's opening his eyes. Come on, now I'll help you sit up. That's a fellow. Uh, feeling a little better now, aren't we? Mr. Scott, he's looking around for the dummy. Here we are, Tommy. I guess this is what you're looking for. The dummy's broken up a bit, but he'll be all right. <laughs> he said he'd kill me, but I told him he couldn't. I killed him. Isn't that wonderful, Mrs. Lazarus? Tompkins is dead. Now we can be together forever, the three of us. You want me, don't you, Mrs. Laswell? You've got to want me because I think you're beautiful. And I love you and I'll be your slave always and always. Last 30 minutes, CBS has presented Out of This World, bringing you Charles Gussman's adaptation of the motion picture Dead of Night. Barry Kroger was featured as Tompkins and Art Carney as Toby. Original music by Albert Berman. <laughs> Out of This World is directed by John Moseman for CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.
Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed this presentation from the Old Time Netcast Network. For more great shows, go to otnetcast.com. Don't forget to like and rate this episode in your favorite podcatching client. Follow this show on Facebook by going to otnetcast.com forward slash Facebook. This episode is covered under the attribution non-commercial share like copyright. For more information, go to otnetcast.com forward slash copyright. Thanks again for listening, and I hope you have a great day.